What a tool this is though. It's saving us loads of work. So Jonathan's boxed all this off last night. He's covered over the window because we're gonna, the mold's gonna go right over the top of that and having that section in will make that panel of the mold a lot stronger. And he's been cutting stuff on the laser for the, for the fences and he's just been sticking them in. So Coobs is here on the camera um, and he's gonna help out with the laser and a bit of filming as well. And then we can get the fences. We're gonna move the back over there Get the fences on, maybe start fiberglassing today. So anyway, welcome back to the channel. So this is the rear screen that was out of the convertible. I'm now going to be able to fit it into the, into the new roof. Yeah, it looks good in there, doesn't it? Probably tint it as well, eh? Ah, I'm just thinking I've got, I've got tint at home as well. Mm. Anyway, so that's what that's going to look like. Shiny glass window in black hole. What a tool this is though. It's saving us loads of work. We, combined with the 3D scans, if we'd had to measure all that and like get cardboard and cut a bit out and cut a bit out until you've got like a, a, a decent template, you still wouldn't have a decent template, would you? You'd have, you, yeah, you'd have hacked up bits and that. Yeah. And so by this being that accurate, it means that we can get like a really accurate seam on the, on the moulds. You've just got to plan as good as you can and work it out on the job really, because there isn't an instruction book, but there will be an instruction book when the kit's made, or rather a video, there'll be instruction videos. But all of this stuff, I guess someone who does fiberglass moulding all the time and is always, it maybe makes just total sense to them, right, yep, this here, that there, and that does actually fit perfect with the, when you look at that, when you've got it pushed on, yeah. and you've got it right right, right on there, yeah. yeah. I've got a little bit of white that I've missed. See that there? So it's just where the masking had hit up onto it. So I'm just gonna get a rattle can and uh, spray that, because you can see it when you're looking through the window. Sharpie. Ah, oh, Posca pen. Posca pen would be perfect for that. That was ideal for that job, saved us having to spray anything, mask anything up. Right, so I'm just going to give this a wipe over with thinners. So that thing there's the, the electric heater to demist the back window. I'm trying to clean stuff off, but some of it's on the outside, so I'll flip it over and do the other side. On the original kit, there was a, a join here. We've got to come around here with the fence because there's a panel here, a panel there, and a, and a panel here. So we need to keep them separate because if, if we didn't break it there, if it didn't have a, a stop, so that the panel will come along and then go up those faces so that when we come to take it off, we can pull it that way because if we didn't do that and we had to pull it well if we didn't break it there it wouldn't pull backwards but it also wouldn't pull out so we've got to create these breaks so that the mold bit by bit releases without too much force and it can't lock back on itself if there's something that goes around the corner yeah, like that there you'd have to lift it that way not that way yeah because these moulds are rock hard once they've, once they've cured. So if these brakes aren't in the right place, the mould might not come off at all. The, it will because the, the, you know, they're in the right place. But if we didn't do this, you wouldn't be able to get the mould out of the part out of the mould. Right, so I'm waiting on Jonathan doing the laser cutting and stuff. Uh, while he's doing that, I've got that back window and I'll just show you this. The window's in. I'm not happy with the seal around the edge, but it's deep enough that I can, once this is set, I'm gonna come back, tape it up either side, and then I'll just run a bead around it and then peel the tape off and we'll just leave it like that. But it's all right, the window's bonded in. That's the cab now sealed up. So while I'm waiting on Jonathan, 
there's not a lot I can do but there's this body line here which is I don't know whether it's pulled in in the mold or what I don't know we'll have to work that out so when when we do another one out of it we might have to adjust this and essentially adjust the mold but you can see there the gap is getting tighter as it goes up so I'm just gonna run the grinder up that gap to get it evened out a little bit I'm just gonna put this tape on it to to what to to sorry um to give me a guide one thing that cubes has pointed out to us is that i don't finish sentences i don't know whether you've noticed it but there's sometimes i just don't finish a sentence but i've finished it in my head like it's finished in my head that's why so there i've put that tape up there to mark where the the, the bit that i want to take off with it which is literally just a thin little slither and maybe get the sharpie and make that a better line and then I can take the tape off and I can see my line better you see there it's, it's about two mil I need to take off it kind of hides it actually you could just draw up there with pen and you wouldn't be able to see it just to keep that line consistent and then I'll, I'll have to sand down the back of that just to smooth it out a little bit it'll need a little bit of white paint on it as well because there's a you can now see fiberglass but that's better than seeing a dodgy dodgy door check so it just needed a couple of mil off it and then when you bring the bonnet up to position now it's a lot more consistent now that gap there i'll tighten up a little bit that's a bit, little bit bigger at the top but the bonnet's further down at the front than it would be the when it when it's on its mounts properly it'll be sat up more like that obviously that's adjusted it anyway so jonathan's cutting fences and i'm labeling fences so we need to give them a name so if we go ds and ps we've got driver side passenger side so go d s top vent top vent i'm going to call this one ducktail ducktail so I can take all these off once I've done this, so D, S, what did we call this bit? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put duck on it. Yeah, that's the duck and that's the tail. <laughs> Just so it's identified. So PS, vent, what do we call that now? A spoiler and PS side. So I'm waiting on Jonathan cutting more of these obviously it just takes as long as it takes so i'll just get on with the waxing what did you say about this before you were saying that this panel here needs done first and the top one there so that first and then that yeah, second this this bit and obviously that bit and that bit and then these side bits because these will have to come off yeah, yeah. well those will have to come off as work off. well so this bit's going to be the first bit then and then we'll have the yeah. fence to go up to to do we'll the top to bit join that to there oh yeah but yeah this bit that bit and that bit will be first and then these bits will come off yeah and then mold that bit to there yeah um, that makes sense so going yeah, across there the thing across there so i'll cut that down to is there much more going on down here then there's not is there there's just the back well you've got that well, bit back, to do and then the back the, that's not too I'm bad then just on with the other side one of them and then i'll do the back one and then there's these these ones through here so that that little bit will be a section on its own to this. Right, well I can take these off now and yeah. wax. So this is the release wax. It's, it's called honey wax. There's lots of different types of release wax. You can even use stuff that's like essentially normal car wax. So with the last lot of stuff that I ordered in, fiberglass and stuff from the fiberglass supply place, the center's another one of these, but it's a different brand and it's just not the same it's really thick and hard and but essentially this is like a solid wax sponge it up like that and get the, the sponge all loaded up and then put a good thick layer of it on the on the paintwork and then you let that dry polish it off and then you put another one on and you just keep on building up you want like two or three layers of wax onto the paint in every little corner everywhere or else you, the, the, the resin will stick to, to the to the paintwork so you've got to be quite vigilant with the wax and make sure you get all the areas that that feels amazing by the way i've been saying this all along like this area here 
I'm really looking forward to polishing it because when you run a cloth over the shapes, it just just flows, feels nice. I know it's weird, but like it, it does, it, it feels nice. It's quite satisfying. Now I'll be waxing all this as well because this will all be fiberglassed as well. So I need to get it right into all the bits. Now we're putting this on now instead of after that, partly, actually I've got an issue. I need to polish this. I need to run the machine polisher on that because that's where the fly landed and I've flatted it down, but I haven't polished it up yet. So I'm gonna have to do that before I put the wax on. So I need the polish and the polisher. I don't know whether you can see here, but this panel hasn't got any shine on it because I've sanded it down to get the marks from the fly. So I'm gonna polish that up because if I don't, the rest of it's polished. So when I take it out the mold, it'll all be shiny. The parts that we produce will be shiny. But if I don't polish this, this bit won't be shiny. So I'll do that before I wax it. Years and years ago, when I first started, I didn't have one of these. And um, so I used to do it all by hand and you'd flat out the, because you get bits of dust in it and that, and this is how you get rid of the dust as well. So I'd sand out the dust, but I would have to polish that by hand, um, sometimes full cars. It's a hell of a lot of work went into it. So once this coat of wax dries, which it does, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's weird though, because it doesn't really dry, it just goes hard. And then you polish off the excess and then you put another layer on. So it's like wax on, wax off, Daniel son. Alrighty kid. Uh, it'll take a, an hour or so for it to dry off. But you can go back in and, and just like, you're better off letting it dry properly, but you can go back in and uh, polish it off and put another coat on. You could just go, now that this has got loads of wax on it, you could literally just go straight on top of this with your gel coat and take a mold, but you'd be able to see all the you know the streaks that this is putting on you see so it's all about keeping the surface like slippy smooth and coated up with plenty of wax and then nothing sticks to it so it's definitely one of the big worries that you you know you cast something into the mold and it doesn't come out that would be an absolute nightmare because not only would the mold be messed up but the part could be as well you know if you can't get the part out you might end up smashing the part to get it out of the mold and that's the last thing that we want to do like i say you just got to get it get it into every nook and cranny we'll be blanking these off actually and these will be getting blanked off as well Show you this it's very satisfying so Jonathan has been obviously so this is from a scan so he scanned it and then put the see if you look at that little notch on the bottom there that just sits into the look at how well that fits right into there and another one for this side 